So now you have FFX running on your desktop, and now you want to put it on your laptop. Now, depending upon your laptop, this is a Lenovo, the original Yoga 13, which has a 4000 graphics chip in it, HD 4000. Uh, you still can get it to run in one pretty good. We're going to go through all the installation and everything and see that you can get it onto your laptop and get this. You're flying on your laptop, take it with you. Uh, you can still enjoy FXX on the road. So, there's a little problem with that because a lot of notebooks nowadays, laptops, tablets, don't have a DVD drive. So, I've gone out to my desktop here, gone out to my DVD, where I'm going to put my flight simulator disc in. I'm going to say share with and go over here to advanced sharing. Uh, this way you don't, by the way, you don't have to buy a separate uh, DVD so as long as you have it on your desktop. So we're just going to say, okay, I want to share this. So I'm going to go to advanced sharing down here and say share this. And I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to simply call it uh, E-DVD uh, drive. Uh, let's get it up. And say okay. Okay. And then we're going to go down here and say close. And now you'll see the little people icons right there. And that means it's shared on your network. Okay. Now... It's only it only can be write or readable, so you don't have to worry about write and read privileges. So now I'm going out to uh, my network now from my uh, this is from my notebook, and I'm going to go out. I'm browsing around the uh, DVD, and I can find the setup.exe file, which is the one I want to run. So we go over here and click on that to launch the uh, install program. So uh, we get it to run. Let's see. Let's click on this and. There it goes. We're going off and it's installing. Now, I'm just going to skip through the long install here. There's going to be a lot of screens here. Uh, it goes a lot slower than this, as you all know. Plus, it's across the network, so it's going to be even slower. But I'm uh, skipping through some of these screens to show you uh, uh, just how fast. As a matter of fact, we're just going to skip to the end here. Well, actually, before we get to the end, you're going to get this kind of error right there at the middle of it. It's because it's going to ask for the second uh, CD. However... It doesn't have the logic built in to understand the mapping. So just take your uh, your current install disk one out. No matter how times you crunch, click on this, it's not going to work. You simply put your install disk two in, click on retry, and then you continue with your installation. So here we are at last screen. Now it's saying removing backup files, blah, 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 all the stuff it's uh, doing, space requirements and all that. You might get a problem with XML a little bit, but uh, for the most part, you should be okay. We're going to go to the software license agreement, say accept. And say activate now or activate later. Now I said activate later, but I had a problem later on. You'll see in the video where I can't activate it. Not sure if that's correctable. I have to wait 30 days. But uh, you might want to go ahead and try and activate it now. Or maybe they were just having a problem with their activation server that day. So uh, let's go ahead and let this thing run. And we get here to loading. So I'm going to skip right past it, right to the screen, welcome screen. I'm going to skip past that because uh, you've all seen probably the welcome screen and all the features it talks about. But we're in the configuration now. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at config customizing the graphics. Now you'll notice here, because I don't have Service Pack 1 or 2 or the Acceleration Pack, so there's no DirectX option here. And that's very important for later on. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and launch it here. Uh, going to go grab another aircraft and everything to see how well it does. This is the first performance before we install the Service Pack. Not even from Service Pack 1 has been installed. Uh, no acceleration packs. This is just a plain vanilla flight simulator. Uh, we're going to see how well it runs on the system like that. And what we're going to find out here is that it runs really good, uh, surprisingly well. Now this is just because with the resolution uh, weren't set correctly for that and my capture program. But that runs. We're going to go in here a little quick and tune up some things, changing the target frame rate and all those kinds of things to make sure that uh, we can take advantage of it. Now select your resolution that's native to your PC. Mine's 1600 by 900. So you would use that if that's your native resolution. So we're back in here and we're, uh, now there's no detail as you can see here. There's just uh, just the aircraft flying and that's it. Uh, a little bit later on we see some of the other things. A little rough looking. Now here I've skipped to some detail so you can see some of the detail we're talking about in the standard. Uh, again, no direct X and everything. Low detail running. Uh, runs, it runs okay, looks okay. I uh, see all the features are working as far as that goes. So, uh, so far, so good. So, I'm going to let this fly between a couple buildings here, take a look around and everything. Uh, on the standard plain vanilla, no service pack, no, just FX that's installed on your uh, Lenovo, uh, works great. So, now we're going to go look at the service pack one. Uh, now, I'm going to, 
I've already downloaded these files uh, and installed them on my Lenovo, so I don't have to worry about doing it across networks. So I'm just going to do Service Pack 1. Remember, I have Acceleration Pack, so I'm not going to do Service Pack 2. But if you don't have Acceleration Pack, you're going to install Service Pack 2. So we go in here, and uh, here comes the usual uh, terms of use and everything from Microsoft. And it's going out here to do the configuration. So uh, here we are. It's uh, going to install. It'll take a little longer than that. I just cut to the end. So we can only show Service Pack 1. So now that we do that, I'm going to go out and run uh, Flight Simulator so we can see how well it works without patch. Now, I say here activate later, but you should want to go ahead and say activate now and put your serial number in because when you install the acceleration pack, it's going to say you can't do it without uh, having it activated the software first. So you have to go back and do that. So you might as well do it now. But anyways, here we are inside the program uh, running fine with the Service Pack 1. So we're going to go ahead and choose an airplane. That's one of the things we're going to do here. Uh, and let's run it. And there we are. I've not done any graphics uh, changes. I'm just uh, trying to get a hold of my airplane here. And you can see, dang it. So anyways, uh, you can see how well it runs with uh, Service Pack 1. No difference, basically. So now it's time to install the Service Pack 1. Uh, now that we know that everything's working fine at this step. So uh, we'll go out here. And, oh, by the way, if you don't have acceleration pack, you can do service pack two. So here we are. Uh, this is the same DVD drive. I'm installing Flight Simulator X Acceleration from the same DVD on the other one. And like I said earlier, you have to activate it first. So you have to run through activation process and everything to do that. So I've launched uh, the Flight Simulator. I went to the activation. I put in my key, and here we are. So I've successfully activated it. Now I can go ahead and actually do the upgrade to the new one, to the acceleration pack. So now what I've done is I've gone out here with the acceleration pack. I've gone and put it in the same DVD drive on my desktop and went to it and ran it, and boom, it, it's going to go ahead and do all that. It's going to compute space requirements and do all that stuff. I'm skipping through this so that we're, we can get past it all. And so here we are, successful Microsoft Acceleration Pack. So now that we have that installed, we're going to go run it and test it. So if we run the Microsoft Flight Simulator, we get to the new screen that comes with Acceleration Pack. So now we go in here and we do the same thing we did before. We go to Settings, double check your settings with one major difference. We now have, if you look there on the right hand side, there is a Preview DirectX 10, which means because DirectX 10 was in development, we have to check that and apply that setting. Now you can play with your settings of frame rates and all that. If you look at my uh, other video, I uh, go ahead and tell to do a maximum. You might want to play with, with your uh, laptop to make sure. Uh, it might crash a few times, but eventually you should get one that says it. Now, I'm having this problem where I can't activate Flight Simulator Expansion Pack or the Acceleration Pack. It may go away. It may, after 30 days, quit working. I don't know yet. Uh, but here you may want to go ahead and just uh, try that, activate it earlier, so you may not have that error. So here we are, I'm back in now, just again, play with this, uh, putting up aircraft, uh, background, or scenery and all that stuff. Uh, do whatever you need to do to get it working correctly for your uh, particular system. Uh, play around with things, then go test. Eventually you'll find a setting that works for your uh, system, even the, uh, the Lenovo I have. So uh, lastly now, we're going to go take a look at uh, it running. I'm going to put it in a window so we can do some temperature uh, checks on the laptop to make sure everything's working okay. Now, uh, I'm going to fly around here to, to examine everything, make sure it's working, and I can change resolutions later on. I did all that. I changed the density of the, of the background and the scenery and everything until I found a place where I dialed in where I felt like I'm not getting any crashes. Uh, everything's working fine whether full screen or windowed mode. But right now, after this, we're going to go take a look at temperatures while we're doing this. So I'm going to close the flight down and then uh, say exit that. And I go in and I've launched a program called uh, SpeedFan. You can go download this at, at speedfan.com. It's a, you can control your fans with this program. You can monitor things. This one doesn't have any fans because it's a laptop. But it will sit there and measure your CPU and everything. So let's take a look at uh, what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the program. You see we're starting out at 53, 54, somewhere around there. I have no cooler underneath this laptop. It's sitting on a glass table. It's not the greatest uh, circulation underneath it, but uh, it, uh, let's take a look at what, what goes on. So when we launch the program, the uh, flight simulator, you'll see that the temperatures in the CPU have already risen somewhat. 
So instead of being at 52 and 53, they're already jumped to uh, 63. Now, I can't give you ranges for your laptop. Don't worry too much about the flames. You have to set the settings in the speed fan to tell you tell it what your top uh, thing is, your top uh, range is, and then it'll monitor that for you. Uh, but as we increase the work, you'll see that it gets uh, higher and higher. Now, again, I can't tell you the temperature for your particular system because I don't know what your system is. So we just have to keep an eye on this and everything. Now, we'll find out later on that I had, oh, 68 is about 69 maybe was my highest centigrade for this laptop. And so I've cut down here to the end, and here you see uh, coming for a landing. Just been flying around with some good detail, 68 degrees centigrade. So uh, that's about the tops of what this uh, laptop is running at. So to recap, go ahead and install everything uh, step by step from your network drive if you don't have an external. If you have an external, just plug it in your laptop USB port if you have a USB port, which all Windows laptops should have. And you should be able to enjoy a uh, flight simulator uh, running to do all your stuff. And just to show you that I'm not uh, just doing screens off of a desktop, here it is running, <coughs> no sound right now, but uh, here it is running off of the Lenovo, perfectly fine, no stalls, no, uh, literally no stalls, but uh, no hesitation and everything. It's working really fun. So enjoy your flight simulator, whether you're doing it on your desktop at home or on your computer or your notebook or your tablet. Depending upon your processor and graphics card, there's no reason why you can't enjoy flight simulator for years to come. And don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. We have over 150 Windows, Windows 8, and Windows Phone 8 videos, and we're publishing more all the time.